unreamed tibial nail, UTN. To carry out intramedullary nailing with the unreamed tibial nail, the knee must be bent at an angle of at least 90 degrees, so that by opening the medullary canal and during insertion of the unreamed nail, the patella is not injured. The following instruments are needed to open the medullary canal. A T-handle used for the 4 mm guide pin, a cannulated cutter with tissue protector. The guide pin with the T-handle is used to determine the insertion site on the proximal tibia. The insertion site is situated above the articular surface on the extension of the longitudinal axis of the medullary canal. The thin cortex is opened by rotary movements of the tip of the guide pin. The exact orientation of the insertion canal is important. To assist aiming, a nail is laid along the anterior edge of the tibia. The guide pin must be tilted in a dorsal direction until it lies parallel to the proximal part of the nail. Once this is done, the guide pin can be turned until it enters the medullary canal. After removal of the T-handle, the medulla is opened using the cannulated cutter. The tissue protector is placed over the cannulated cutter and pushed as far forwards as possible so that the sharp cutting edges of the instrument do not injure the soft tissue at the insertion site. The protector also protects the surgeon from the cutting edges of the instrument. On the model, we have deliberately pulled the protector back in order to show the cutting instrument being turned gently and thus cutting through the cortex and entering the medullary canal. Opening the cortex must be carried out carefully. It is more difficult on an artificial than a human bone. Once the medulla has been reached with the cannulated cutter, it is withdrawn. On the artificial bone, the bone plug, cut by the cannulated cutter, does not always come out with the cutter. If this occurs, the bone must be unclamped and the plug of cancellous bone removed. To determine the required nail length, a special transparent template is available. This is placed on the x-ray of the uninjured tibia. The exact length of the nail can be read off the template. To mount the insertion instrument on the unreamed tibial nail, three attachments are available. Two of these are used for insertion of the nail, the third only for extraction. The attachment with the right angled sleeve on the front covers the proximal end of the nail. This creates an optimal connection between the intramedullary nail and the insertion assembly. The attachment without guide sleeve does not enlarge the proximal nail cross-section. However, it may be used if the nail can be inserted into the tibia with ease. On our model, we're using the attachment without the protection sleeve. This is introduced into the insertion handle from below. The connecting screw is inserted into the insertion handle and the attachment from the top, screwed into the proximal end of the intramedullary nail and tightened a little using the combination wrench. The unreamed tibial nail is introduced as far as possible by hand. Lateral positioning of the insertion handle facilitates the introduction of the intramedullary nail. In contrast to the situation in the clinic, a few light blows with the slotted hammer may be needed to insert the nail into the artificial bone. In this case, we need the inserter extractor for the UTN. It is screwed onto the proximal thread of the connecting screw. It serves to guide the slotted hammer during insertion and extraction of the implant. Having inserted the nail, the inserter extractor assembly is removed.
If the nail is to be locked proximally, the insertion handle must be swung in a medial direction. The slot and groove of the insertion handle and the coupling block must connect properly. Proximal Locking The following instruments are needed for proximal locking. A protection sleeve, a trocar, a drill sleeve, a 3.2 millimeter drill bit, a depth gauge, and a screwdriver. There are two methods of locking in the coronal plane suitable for the unreamed tibial nail. If the bone length and its rotation have to be maintained by the nail, static locking must be carried out. If locking is purely to ensure correct rotation of the tibia, dynamic locking is appropriate. Static locking will be shown first. The tissue protector with the inserted trocar is passed through the hole marked STAT on the insertion handle and down onto the bone. The trocar is removed and is replaced by the 3.2 millimeter drill sleeve. We drill a 3.2 millimeter hole through both cortices. We measure the required length of the bolt through the tissue protector. To ensure that the self-cutting trocar tips of the locking bolt penetrate the far cortex, we need to add 2 millimeters to the length. After insertion of the locking bolt, the tissue protector is removed. The procedure is the same for insertion of the dynamic locking bolt. In addition to the two proximal locking bolts in the coronal plane, an additional diagonal locking bolt can be inserted. The cross-section of the proximal tibia shows the obvious advantage of this screw arrangement. Due to the ventral position of the intramedullary nail, here shown in black, the medial lateral locking bolt is not firmly anchored in the thin cortical bone. Locking bolts to be inserted diagonally are longer and have a better purchase in cancellous bone. A combination of medial-lateral and diagonal locking leads to better fixation of the proximal fragment in proximal tibia fractures. The 45-degree insertion handle is used to position the diagonal bolt. This handle may be positioned medially or laterally according to the desired position of the bolt. The 45-degree insertion handle is held in the correct position by a knurled nut. Actual insertion of the locking bolt is carried out in relation to the medial-lateral bolt. Once locking has been completed, the 45-degree insertion handle and the insertion assembly are removed. This section illustrates the position and orientation of the proximal locking bolt. The sealing screw prevents tissue ingrowth into the proximal end of the nail and facilitates explantation after successful healing of the fracture. Removal of the unreamed tibial nail. Having removed the locking bolts, the coupling block marked extraction is placed on the proximal end of the nail and fixed with the connecting screw. The inserter extractor is positioned and the nail removed by gentle blows of the slotted hammer.